somebody please explain to me why we needed to reenact the whole Solange and Jay-Z fight. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for Our Kind of People, Season 1, Episode 7, Fathers, Daughters, and Sisters. So we got Slip Away playing, and we see Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope, is sitting on the beach. He hears someone calling his name. This person is his big brother, Louis. He's running up the shore, calling out to him. They hug and embrace. It's a beautiful moment. Um, his This is his big brother, but of course, the optics. Teddy has lived on. And of course, his brother is still the same age he was when he passed away. So he was a young man at the time. Fine, too. Young, fine. Young, fine man. <laughs> um... Lewis asked him, you know, I'm I'm glad to see you, but why are you here? All of a sudden, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope, you know, starts holding his chest again. It's almost like he's having a heart attack, but I could tell, okay, he must be, you know, getting revived or something like that. Whatever, whatever space he's in, in limbo, I don't know where his subconscious is right now. But in the space he's in, he was being pulled back into, into reality. So that's what the pain was. Um, he's in the hospital, of course, and the family's all standing around watching Angela and Nikki because we just found out that Nate is Nikki's father. And so Nikki don't want to talk to nobody. She's not going to hash this out right now. So she just storms off. Nate apologizes to Angela for how things, you know, have transpired. You know, he wasn't trying to just drop in like this, but he's appreciative and grateful that Teddy Franklin pulled his weight the way that he did and got him out. She doesn't want him to blame himself, you know. There's no blame on him at all. Um, she asks him if he has somewhere to stay. He's going to be staying on Teddy Franklin Eli Pope's compound. So he does have somewhere to lay his head. Angela's pleasantly surprised by her father's generosity. So the doctor comes out and both Leah and Angela walk up like, okay, what's up? What's going on? Leah looking at her like, you a little antsy. <laughs> this is my daddy, but okay. They introduce themselves. You know, we are his daughters. And um, so she tells them that they that he suffered a heart attack and Leah wants to speak privately. And so Angela grab up her stuff. Okay, we're going to talk in private. So they in there talking privately. And Angela asks, you know, what might have caused this. And she tells them that he had been um, misusing or overusing his medication for the Parkinson's. And Angela's looking like, Parkinson's? Well, I'll be. <laughs> she didn't even know. Um, Leah wants him, you know, she wants to go back there and see him. And of course, Angela's like, me too. So they go inside and Leah immediately breaks down crying. Angela's like, why you didn't tell me that he had Parkinson's? And she's like, was I supposed to? Why was I supposed to? And Angela tells her, I didn't mean it like that. And of course, Leah's like, I apologize, girl. It's just a lot going on. <laughs> this is just a lot, you know, and she, it, it's been a lot holding this secret. He still wants to keep it a secret. She ain't even told her husband about it. So she would appreciate it if that stayed between the two of them. And Angela says she ain't going to tell nobody. Um, They think because the reason why it's a secret, of course, you know, he cares very much about his legacy and how he's going to be perceived after he passes away, what type of legacy he's he's going to leave. And so this can't be it. This cannot be it. And um, that's more important to him than anything, his legacy. So Angela understands that. Um, she has to go and check on her husband and the children. So she leaves Angela there with Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope. She tells him, you know, I just lost my mama. I can't lose you. I can't lose you too. You know, we have unfinished business. Don't you die on me, old man. <laughs> you owe me. And she, when she grabs his hand, like she's overcome with emotion. I guess she didn't feel like she would feel anything because she don't really know the man, but it's her father. So naturally, like her heart, you know, breaks for him. When Raymond and Leah get home, the press is waiting outside for them, including Alex. You know, asking all these questions. They waiting at the door. Alice asks how Teddy Franklin Eli Pope is doing after the heart attack. Leah tells them he's fine. I wouldn't be home if he wasn't fine. And she's like, you would be home if you were trying to cover something up for him. And then Leah's like, girl, okay, girl. <laughs> she um she says she's going to, um, 
Wait, did I skip something? No, I didn't skip nothing. I didn't skip nothing. She she just she kind of ignores Alex, and um she goes on in the house, and um she tells Raymond, you know, she gonna find out why this woman is here in the Oak Bluff, and when she finds out, she's gonna squash it. Tariq drops by on Angela, and she's at the hospital. Well, no, she's going to the hospital soon. And, you know, she tells him that Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope is stable. But, you know, he got she got issues with Nikki. Nikki ain't talking to her. He tells her that that Nikki will come around. You know, this is a lot to process. He tells her about his conversation with Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope before he had the heart attack. He kind of feels responsible for it um, because of the line of questioning was about his father's death, his father's death and all of that. And um, he fills her in on what he found out. He doesn't believe his father would commit suicide. He knows his dad. He's like. He ain't that kind of man. Like, I, I just don't think he would have went out like that. So he going to go find, you know, find some more of his friends so he can get some more answers. Leah, she's on the phone talking to Quincy, um, who is just now leaving the hospital. She's trying to, you know, tell him how to maneuver around the media and not run into the press. Uh, Raymond, he tells her that Alex is angry about um Teddy and his mother getting together in cahoots and you know basically paying her to leave town and so she's like wait a minute you knew this and you ain't say nothing and he's like I mean I just found out mm -hmm. you just found out <laughs> you just found out my behind Raymond um she says she's gonna do a press conference so there's that She's going to try to get out in front of it. Angela, she's sworn by the press as well on her way, uh, pulling into the compound. She's there to bring Nate some food, and she apologizes to him for not telling Nikki about him and all of that. He doesn't blame her for that. You know, he's like, I understand. You did what you had to do. You were trying to protect her. I understand. It is what it is. Mama Eve kept me abreast <laughs> to what was going on. Mama Eve kept him up to date. And kept him up to speed as far as Nikki's life was concerned. You know, bringing him pictures, letters. Well, not not really letters because she didn't know he existed. But she brought him pictures, um, you know, drawings, that sort of thing to keep him, um, to keep to to keep him updated on his child's life. And so he didn't really miss out on much. Angela notices that he slept on the floor, so you know, so it's it's clear that. He is completely institutionalized, which is very sad. Very sad. I'm sure coming back home after a long... It makes me... It really made me... Like, I was crying because it made me think about my brother. Um, I have an older brother. And, I, you know, we don't do that whole half-brother, half-sister thing in the black community. That's my brother. <laughs> so, my brother, um, he... I want to say he's been out at least... I should I should keep up with this type of thing, but I do know that he like he like predicted well not really predicted the thing, but way back in the day <laughs> when we were writing letters to one another, he would you know, and I asked when you get out, it would be well you're gonna be married with kids by the time I get out, and that's exactly <laughs> you know the time frame of my life that I was in. I think I had just got married. I was um, yeah, I had just got married. And I had just had my first child and all of that. And my brother was coming home. And he had been in there for 20 years. And so it made me very emotional because I, I was thinking about him and what that transition had to be like for him. Great, great. You know, luckily he is married and, you know, he had someone out here to welcome him with welcome, you know, with open arms, um, you know, a home, a bed, uh, all that. I'm sure she got him well acclimated to society once he was out. But Nate was institutionalized. And I'm sure most men that do long stints in prison and then return home have to like readjust to not being in a cell. So I'm glad they shined a little bit of light on that, you know, a little bit of um, what's the word? awareness <laughs> bringing a little awareness um anyway um he tells her that you know about his locks and how he grew them you know basically to rebel that was the one thing they couldn't change about him they couldn't control on him and so that's why he did it but he's ready to let that part of his life go he's ready to let the locks go the locks 
bring back all kind of prison memories, I'm sure. And so he want to get rid of that. He want to know, can she help him out? So she take him down to, um, wait, did this happen yet? Cause I don't want to, okay. What? <laughs> don't want to skip nothing. But anyway, she take him down to the beach. They're at the beach and, um, Angela like ceremoniously cuts his locks. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's given tribal, you know, it's given ancestors, <laughs> you know, something like it was, it was, it was very ceremonious, you know, like, I don't, I don't know. I can't explain it, but, um, it, 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 it made me feel like it's a tradition that black folks should keep all around the world. <laughs> like she was teaching us something like, damn, what should we be doing this? Should we be taking haircuts this serious? Cause she made it seem like it was such a um, such a monumental thing, such a meaningful thing. I know cutting your locks is growing your locks and cutting your locks. I know that it is. I know that it means way more to us and the person, you know, that grew the locks that cut that or cutting their locks. I know it means more to that person than, you know, the outside world, but the way that, um, it was shown to us, it made me feel like, damn, <laughs> this, this makes me feel like I'm a little bit closer to the culture. You know what I'm saying? She was out there by the fire and cutting his locks and telling him the importance of it all and um and what the ancestors used to do and all of that. Like I really felt like I was getting a history lesson and I was here for it. But she cuts the locks, you know, twists it, twists it on back up again, gives him a nice little new do. And he takes the locks um that he, you know, cut off and throws them into the fire. And so, you know, that is really like getting rid of Everything from the past, you know, all of it, it's gone now. Um, so he thanks her for that, of course. And then he ends up giving her his journal, you know, telling her that it's his entire life. So go ahead and take that. Of course, he is he's intending for her to give it to Nikki. Okay, Angela, she goes to try to talk to Nikki. And um, at first, Nikki kind of sits up to listen, of course, when Angela starts talking about Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope, and that... You know, um, she doesn't want her daughter to miss out on all the years that she missed out with her father. She doesn't want her. She doesn't want her to feel the way that she's felt all these years. So she wants her to get to know him. Um, Nikki kind of loses interest in the conversation after Angela tells her, you know, we're really. It's not like he didn't want to get to know you, didn't want to see you. It was me. I'm the one that kept him away and. That 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 set Nikki right off. She she don't want to hear it now. Get on out. Get on out. <laughs> like cause you weren't trying you weren't trying to protect me. You was trying to protect yourself. You, Mama Eve, and Auntie Pinky lied to my face my whole life. Please get out. Please leave. And so she leaves, but on her way out, she leaves the journal on the nightstand. When she steps outside, Auntie Pinky is watching Leah's press conference. And you know, she's up there saving face per usual. And um, telling them all is well. Franklin and Holdings is better than ever. Alice is in the crowd. And she got questions about um, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope's ride to the hospital with Tariq and Nate, an ex-felon. And so what he got to do with him. And she's like, well, you know, prison reform. <laughs> We're all about that. We're all about being the change we wish to see in the world. And that starts with prison reform. Oh, okay. With family. I guess I get it. Ain't that, it, it, ain't that Nate's? Ain't that ain't Nate um your sister's baby daddy? And Leah's like, okay, and with that, I'm not answering any more of your questions. You guys have a great day. And she, you know, heads on out. Um, the whole time Nikki was in the back, you know, sitting around watching from behind. Um she threw out his charges too. She threw out the fact that he had went went in for and he was charged with an accessory to murder. You know, Nikki like accessory to murder. You said he ain't do nothing. <laughs> that don't sound like he was innocent, Mama. Um, Leah, she stops. You know, stops Alex on her way out and tells her, you know, that's twice, Miss Girl. You're not gonna get a third time. Let it happen a third time, and I won't be so lenient. Okay, and she's like, is that a threat, Leah, girl? I ain't got to threaten you. <laughs> I ain't got to threaten you. Leah says, that's Mrs. Franklin DuPont. With the, with all it is. That's Mrs. Franklin DuPont. <laughs> Girl, she know you, Mary. <laughs> she was Mrs. Franklin. I mean, she was Mrs. 
What's her last name? What's his last? Dupont. She was Mrs. Dupont too for a little while for just a, for just a smidgen, before your mother in law and your daddy decided, <laughs> you know, to 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 mess up the thing. So, you, the girl, please. <laughs> um, Angela, she shows up ready to fight. Where is that bitch, Alex? She done came for my baby, and that's what she not going to do. It's one thing to come for me. It's one thing to come for you. But she not about to come for my baby. And Leah looking like, girl, I'm excited. You know, thank you for thank you for having my back. I need a little backup. Um, when they're, While they're talking, all of a sudden, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope starts going into cardiac arrest. So they got to do chest compressions, all of that. It's going to be, he has to go into emergency surgery. His subconscious mind is back with his brother again. And this time they're like both in suits in this empty space, looking over a open coffin with their father inside. And um, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope tells his brother, you know, that he was their dad's favorite. And his brother's like, no, nah, I was just the first. Like you was the favorite. <laughs> you, he could, he could write all the mistakes he made with me, with you. And so, yeah, I'm just the firstborn, but you are daddy's little Teddy. <laughs> so, um, Teddy says that he doesn't want to be him. You know, that he don't, he doesn't want to end up like his father. You know, he's not ready to die. He's not ready. In real life, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope is, is in, you know, going into surgery. Like I said, Lauren is home crying, worried about her grandfather and Raymond checks in on her. Um, Nate tiptoeing around upstairs, you know, and then he glared. I'm sorry about that. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I just thank y'all for being so hospitable. I appreciate it. I'm sorry about your grandfather. He's a good man. I appreciate him for doing what he's doing for me. I'm praying for him. <laughs> you know, all that. And Raymond is like, Raymond tells him he doesn't have to tiptoe around the house. He's a guest. Make yourself at home. Um, okay. They head, um, the head of staff of, you know, of the, uh, housekeeping staff and all of that she's giving them a speech you know giving them their instructions on how to go about the bit you know go about business as usual um she basically tells them don't be talking to the press if you if you got any questions if you come to any type of bullshit <laughs> bring it to me you know but don't be talking to the press and if they do ask you something you just tell them that everything is good on the home front once they, you know, clear the room and everything, Tariq walks in and she greets him and gives him a hug, you know, asks him what, what brings him on by. And, um, he asks, he asks her, you know, I thought I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got questions about my father's death and, um, I, you know, I'm just wondering if, you know, you know, anything, you know, anybody, I know you were around around that time. And she tells him that, um. Darius Bates might know something. And uh, Darius Bates was, you know, somebody that Teddy hired, you know, here and there. He was, you know, fill in for, fill in as a security and help out Calvin. So he might know something. But then um, he's like, okay, so how can I find him? And she tells him, well, you can't because he died. But he had a girlfriend at the time. And I know you might know her, Patricia Vaughn. Auntie Pinky? Yes, Auntie Pinky. That woman Got all the secrets. <laughs> she got more secrets than the grave. So go talk to her. Raymond is meeting with Alex. And he telling her, you're going to have to ease up. You know, you're supposed to be targeting Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope, getting me my business back. And you done drag my wife and kids. And you done, you done spill all this mess, drug us all down. It's feeling like collateral damage here. And I just need you to get my business back. And she tells him, you know, well, Teddy and Olivia conspired to take your life from you. You know, like our life. He deserve everything he getting shit. And do, and don't you ever wonder like what life would have been like together? Like don't you would have don't you wonder what would have happened between us? How our life would be? And you know, she leans in some more scoops up and kisses him and he's like, "Uh-uh. I love my wife. Thank you very much." And she going to say today. And so he gets out like, "Leave my stay away from me and stay away from my family." Slams the door and heads on back in the hospital. Angela was standing there watching the whole thing. I said, what, what you doing, girl? She was standing there spying. Nikki, she's at back at the house, sweeping up, you know, down in the salon, and Lauren drops by. She tells her that she met Nate. You know, she thinks he's pretty cool. She gives her, her, you know, 
a, her a, a few little anecdotes on father daughter relationships and how she really cherishes hers. She feels like her relationship with her father is the most important relationship of her life, and that if um, Nikki has the opportunity to have a relationship with her father, she should take it. So, you know, Nikki's going to oblige. She tells her that she has this journal from him, but she's been afraid to read it. So Lauren is like, you want me to read it? Okay, girl, I'll read it. And when she starts reading it, it's all about Nikki. Seven pounds, um, three ounces. He is just, he loves his baby girl. So he's never stopped thinking about her, you know, so that is, that's very touching as well. And listen, the girl that plays Nikki acts her ass off. Because the way she gives emotion in her face and she don't be having lines, it's like, girl, yes, I believe it. I believe all of it, Nikki. I believe all of it. So, yes, kudos to the actor. Kudos to her. Um, Okay, Alex, she stops a fellow Howard alumni in the parking lot. He a doctor. You go to LK, a fellow Bison H, you, okay. And he say, you went to Howard? She probably didn't because how, if you famous, if you famous, people from your school know you went to their school. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, that's just not getting by. It's not just getting by that Anika Noni Rose went to fam. You know, everybody at fam knows she went there. <laughs> so anyway, he's like, um, you went to Howard? Can I get an autograph? And she says, I do you one better. I'll give you a selfie if you tell me, you know, the, the details of Teddy Franklin Eli Pope's health problems. So, yeah, he gets, she going to go on and get the tea. Um, wait. Okay, Tariq. He drops in on Auntie Pinky. And he asked her about Darius Bates, and she looked like she could, had seen a ghost. Just, uh, uh, Darius Bates? Darius Bates? I don't think I know that one. That name don't ring a bell. I don't know who he is. And he's like, oh, but the people said y'all dated. Oh, child, I dated a lot of people that summer. What summer? How you know what summer? How you know what summer, Auntie Pinky? You already lying and just telling on, telling on yourself. He's standing up there looking at her like, you just going to lie to my face, Auntie Pinky? Really? So she lies and says she doesn't know him, doesn't know. It's just not ringing bells, you know. Um, but I'll tell Angela you drop by. <laughs> she's just going to lie. He doesn't press the issue. He knows that she's lying, but he doesn't press. He just, you know, goes on about his business. Um, Teddy and his brother are back on the beach. And um, Teddy can, you know, he can feel this surgery that he's going through, you know. So he's like wincing and all of that in pain and um, his brother, you know, tells him, you know, he, he knows that the past is coming back to bite him. And, um, he tells him, you know, he didn't have to have these, he didn't have these health issues until Angela Vaughn. He's like, I know that name. E that's, ain't that Eve daughter? That's your daughter. Let me guess. You walked out on him. <laughs> he like reads, reads his whole entire life right then and there. And, you know, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope is just like, don't judge. Don't you judge me. And um, his brother is trying to hold him accountable for it all. And he tells him, um, you know, you can't continue to ignore your issues. You know, they'll always be there. And Teddy Franklin is like, I think I think they're almost done here. I think we're done. <laughs> and his brother is like, you know, there's only one way that will be done. And he's like, go to hell, brother. Now, why would you say that? He just, even in, even in your comatose state, you ain't shit, Teddy Franklin, Eli Pope, even, even in limbo, <laughs> in life, in death, in limbo, I just, you can't do nothing with him. Back in real time, the surgery done went well. Um, okay, Angela Leah, and see, this is what I was talking about. Initially, this whole scene here made me mad because why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Anyway. Angela Leah and Raymond in an elevator. Angela wastes no time confronting Raymond for being with Alex. And we keep going back and forth from like the, the visuals from the camera to them in the elevator. She kicking on them and, be, and hitting them and everything. So the optics are probably going to look like these people have had some type of, you know, quarrel in this elevator. It's definitely going to go public. I, I just don't know why we had to pull from that situation and write it in this script. Why are we doing that? That That's what Dick Wolf be giving over there on SVU. He just will take from any news 
<laughs> any real life situation and then throw it on TV and then say in the end, it's fictional. It ain't fictional. I know what this is about. <laughs> We already live this. Why are these writers doing this? It's lazy. It's lazy. The altercation could have went differently. Why she couldn't confronted him when she saw him out there in the parking lot? Now, why she couldn't say, uh, excuse me? So you the, you the snake? Are you the one? And then she could have gave him an opportunity to come clean to Leah. And if he didn't, then she was going to spill it. You know, something like that. Not the whole scenario that we have seen on TMZ between Solange and Jay-Z. Just play out on this show. I ain't like that. Don't do that no more. Don't do that no more. Okay, writers? That's lazy. <laughs> that's that's lazy. But anyway. Um, they get out of surgery. He gets out of surgery. And the, and the doctor that was talking to um, Alex that done spilled it all. For a picture, no less. Girl, no, you would have had to pay me for my information. <laughs> A picture and he took I guess he don't need it he a doctor but anyway um he tells him that the surgery that Teddy is out of surgery Angela and Leah they stayed overnight with Teddy um he's still sedated but stable Leah thanks thanks her for you know taking up for her her with Raymond and all of that and staying with her and their dad you know they pray over Teddy and then he wakes up Angela is getting ready to leave and Leah kind of pulls her back like no sis you a real one. <laughs> you in now. Leah, the, like, she's proven to be very loyal. So, Leah, you know, and that's 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 all they care about, loyalty. So, she's proven herself to Leah, and, you know, Leah, Leah is, is she's she's on board. She on board with having a sister now. Um, Nikki is home reading her father's journal, and, um... She feels connected to him, you know, being that they're so much alike. And she, you know, she asks Angela how he ended up in prison. Angela tells her what happened. Angela says that she nearly lost her father. And, you know, knowing that makes her want to get to know him more. And Nikki's like, but what about Mama Eve? What about him abandoning you? What about all that? And, you know, she's just like, listen, I, uh, life is complicated. All I know is what's in my heart. And I want to I want to get to know him. What's in your heart, Nikki? Nikki says, I want to get to know Nate. I want to get to know my father. Very, very. It was like um, that scene was kind of Tyler Perry, like <laughs> the writing. I want to get to know my I want to get to know Nate. I want to get to know my father. Girl, okay. <laughs> I get, okay, okay, girl. I see what y'all doing there. Anyway, Raymond is explaining his interactions with Alex to Leah. You know, he just wanted his company back. And Alex is just like, I mean, not Alex. Leah's like, but did you kiss her? Uh-huh, yeah, yo ass. You kissed her. Alex is on the news right now reporting on, on Teddy's health issues. And because it's her duty to report what's going on with him health-wise. I'm like, what? What does this have to do with anything? What does this have to do with anything, Alex? Anyway, um, she break all kind of HIPAA laws and violations. I mean, right? <laughs> like you just can't tell people's diagnosis on the TV or can you? But anyway, she done told the world that he is suffering from Parkinson's. And so, of course, now Leah got to go fix the problem again. So she go back in her closet, throw them pumps on and tell him, listen, you might as well pack a bag now and I want you out tonight. Get out tonight. So he got to go. Um, Auntie Pinky unpacked the bag herself. And she's headed back to Boston. She leaves a note for Angela. So she's out. She, I don't know. <laughs> she running. She running from her problems. Angela and Nikki, they meet Nate at the beach. And Nate and Nikki go for a walk. It's very nice and touching. We love to see it. Teddy is watching the news himself. He just needs, He can I have a room? Can I just have the room to myself? Soon as he kind of like throw, you know, throws his arm back, he gets a sigh of relief right there just for a minute. <laughs> Closes his eyes and here's his brother in the background. See there, brother? <laughs> See there? And brother sitting there with a bullet hole in his forehead. So that makes me think Teddy might have killed his own brother. Brother did say you sacrificed me, you sacrificed Eve, and you sacrificed your daughter just to make it to the top. So, yeah, I think he killed his brother, and that's what he is really trying to keep under wraps. That's what that that that's the thing that he just cannot have coming forward. Um, 
But he tells him, his brother tells him, um, this is what happens when you don't deal with your demons. You know, everyone comes gunning for you. You can't hide from the truth forever, brother. You can't hide. And he can't. And we're going to see tonight. Because <laughs> this is late. And I'm so sorry, guys. When I'm when these kids go back to school, I will be back at it. Okay? Back at timely reviews. Because ain't nobody getting nothing down with, with, with two little ones running around. Um, anyway, that's where we end. So... Anxious to see what happens next, of course. I don't want to get no more of these moments where we're going to relive some stuff off of TV. And I already know that that's going to come back to backfire. I already know that's going to be in the blogs and the news in the next episode. Because <laughs> why else would they keep... Why else would they do it that way? And why else would it be so obvious that it's the whole Solange and Jay-Z scenario? If not to... To, you know, make it a situation where this is one more thing out there in the media. Um, you know, messing up their perfect image. Anyway, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's called me Busby and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>